Hello guys, this is going to be a video review of the Objective 2 amplifier created by Northwest Audio and Video Guy. I'm going to abbreviate his name and just say N Wave Guy later on and more in the video. So, the amplifier that you see ahead of you was mass produced by JDS Labs. JDS Labs also makes their own amplifiers such as the CMOI and the uh, C421 amplifier. They are located in the US. So that's the reason why I bought the bought this amplifier from them. There are other vendors that mass produce the Objective 2 amplifier that are located in other parts of the um, world. Um, one vendor is Epiphany Audio, which is located in the United Kingdom. They uh, their version of the Objective 2 amplifier has a slight aesthetic change, being that instead of the front panel as you see ahead of you being a stainless steel silver, theirs is a stainless steel black. And some of the lettering are different. Obviously, it, it won't say distributed by J JDS Labs. Um, just a tour of the front panel. The uh, the first thing that you're greeted with is a 14 to 20 volt AC input jack. This amplifier does not accept um, DC. So keep that in mind if you're buying a, a, a AC adapter for this amplifier. The AC adapter for this amplifier both powers the amplifier in case you want to use it as a desktop as well as charging the dual 9 volt batteries inside of the circuitry. Um, it states that it's 14 to 20 volts but it can also take 13.5 volts as well as long as the milliamps that is being sent out by the adapter is more than 200. Over here you have your power switch. By pressing it, you agree to, like there is an LED light that indicates that the amplifier is turned on and ready to amplify the signal. This amplifier, the Objective 2, has a smart shutdown feature which prevents damage to the batteries as well as your headphones if the batteries um, get too low, of, if, if the voltage of the batteries drop below a certain level because if that happens one you can damage the batteries by in case one battery dies before the other and it can also send DC um, power out of the headphone out towards your speakers and completely damage them so the way this works is if the voltage level of the 9 volt batteries drop below a certain specification the amplifier shuts off the sound but the LED light remains on to tell you that the amplifier's battery are too low and that it requires charging. You have your 3.5 millimeter output jack. You've seen this already, the power LED. You have your Alps analog volume control. This is a very clean and robust analog volume control. Uh, when scrolling through it with uh, a source connected or a source not connected and the amplifier is just on and you have your headphones or IEMs connected, you will not hear any noise as you're scrolling the uh, volume switch. There's no sounds of plastic bags, you know, being messed about with. It's just a clean and very smooth feeling control. Uh, you have your gain switch over here, which can be change per request so if you're ordering it from a mass produce or if you're even building it yourself you can just change the gain to whatever you feel necessary for your certain situation uh jds labs by default ships these amplifiers with a gain of 2.5 decibels to 6.5 or i believe it was 7 or 8 decibels so when the switch is out it is at the lowest um gain which is what i have set right now is 2.5 decibels and when it switches in, it's at the highest gain, which is 6.5 decibels. The amplifier can, uh, this amplifier, as far as I know, can be set to 1 decibel gain and 2.5 decibel, which is the lowest I've heard of. So when it's in, the gain is 2.5 decibels, which is what I have for my lowest, and that's the highest. And then when it's out, the gain is at just 1 decibel, which is just very slight amplification. So... In theory, when an amplifier's gain is, basically an amplifier sounds the best at its lowest gain. The distortion is a lot lower and the sound is more cleaner. But when the gain is more higher, you get a more punchy and in your face sound. Some may like that and some may don't, but in theory, there's this more, it's just less distortion is whether or not you can hear it or not, but there is just less distortion and a slightly more cleaner sound. Um, This jack over here, 
is your 3.5 millimeter line in input. This is where you plug your iPod in via the line out dock if you're using an iPod. Also, you could just plug it in via the headphone out and then have a 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter cable. You can also use it with any other source, but using it with that method that I just explained 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter is not the best because you're basically amplifying the existing amplifier signal. So what you really want to do with an amplifier is take a line out directly from the digital to analog converter, converter, sorry, and feed it directly to the amplifier. That gives it the best signal. It's straight from the digital to analog converter. There's no amplifier or preamp in the way to, you know, distort the signal or reduce its transparency. So as you can see, all of the controls and all of the inputs and outputs are on the front panel. There is nothing on the back panel. If this had the uh, objective digital to analog converter or ODAC installed, there will be a USB port back here. But this is just the objective to amplifier by itself. Now, this amplifier has caused a lot of controversy in the sense that there's been so much arguments uh fortunately there's been a lot of stuff that i've learned because of this amplifier and a lot of stuff that other people has learned because of this amplifier it has led me to take a different approach to um buying audio gear from now on and me bore i'm going to be more on, on the objective side as opposed to being on the subjective side and listening to people's reviews or reading their reviews and basing my purchases off of that uh end wave guy was banned from HeadFi because of his more objective approach. I'm not going to go into that because it's going to be very long, but yeah, I don't associate myself with HeadFi anymore. I think HeadFi is just a giant um, scam station in the sense that they own, they always censor factual evidence or they either they censor it or they put it in the sound science sub form where it's very hard for the newcomer to even see it. Basically, HeadFi is just a, a place for people who are just easily fooled by um, placebo and their senses to just hang out and talk about the next two thousand US two thousand dollar USB cable they're gonna buy for their um <laughs> their digital to analog converter. It's it's a very very um snobbery and a very elitist area to be. So I pretty much you know disengaged from that website as a whole. So my subjective opinion, because I have no uh, measuring system, so I'm just giving my subjective opinion on this amplifier. And there's not much I can really say about this amplifier because it really has no sound of its own. This amplifier is like it's spectacular in terms of its measurements. It's uh, its total harmonic distortion is very low. It's similar to noise ratio is about is, is in the hundred and decibels range which is very very good it's frequency response linearity 0 0.1 decibels from 20 hertz to 20 that uh, 20 thousand hertz is very good as well very linear um it's crosstalk is about 65 decibels so it's a very it's a very focused and it has very good image in the sound station as a result um its distortion levels are very low this is a very transparent amplifier basically it's as some will say a wire with gain meaning that this amplifier acts as a wire where wires typically just take the signal and transport it from A to B without ch touching or alternating the signal in any way and with gain is because it actually amplifies this signal all while not touching this, the original signals um, characteristics or pretty much stuff like that so this amplifier has a very spacious detailed and focused sound everything just sounds effortless even though effortless may just be a more you know audio f f audio file kind of word where most like gear should just be effortless in a sense at all times but i would really describe it as effortless because i don't really sense any you know it's just it, the music just kind of flows naturally how can i really can't even explain it the sound of this amplifier is just transparent and I really, like I said before, I just can't explain a sound. I can't explain a gear that has no sound in terms of explaining it 
sound quality wise or subjective so basically I'll just say this amplifier is perfect for those who just don't want any kind of coloration in their gear um, this amplifier will pretty much allow you to hear the where it'll, it'll allow you to hear the way your digital to analog converter will sound and also it'll allow you to hear the way your IEMs or your headphones typically sound this amplifier has um, enough power to drive uh, like a lot of headphones um, except your electrostatic headphones such as the AKG K1000s or any like their stacks or your Sennheiser HE90 those headphones need their need a dedicated amplifier that usually comes with them because those headphones are impressively power hungry but headphones such as the Sennheiser HD800s your AKG 701s Bayer, Dynam Bayer Dyn Dynamic T1s or your um grado stuff like those those types of headphones or even the lesser models will be easily driven from this amplifier i use the uh weststone es5 custom in-ear monitors and this amplifier has way more than enough power to to um, power those iems iems typically don't even need any power at all really well they need power obviously but since they're so sensitive the slightest distortion the slightest sounds um, or hiss from any source will easily get picked up by these amplifiers along with the very high noise isolation of these amp I mean sorry not amplifiers by these IEMs along with the very high noise isolation that these IEMs provide you're going to easily hear any little um, distortions that's not part of the music so the reason why I even bought this amplifier with a very sensitive I am like my Weston ES 5s is not necessarily because I needed more power it's because I wanted an amplifier with um low output impedance as opposed to my iPod touches built-in amplifier this iPod touch that you see right here is a 3g model and the output impedance for this iPod is rated at about 7 to 8 OHMs or ohms so the general rule of thumb here is that you don't want your output impedance of the amplifier to be more than one eighth of the input impedance of your speakers. In my Weston ES5, input impedance is 20 ohms, meaning that the 7 to 8 ohms is way beyond one, one eighth of the input impedance. So if the input impedance or the output impedance of the amplifier exceeds one eighth of the input impedance of your speakers, you're going to have a very, um, a very skewed frequency response as opposed to the frequency response being as the speakers themselves are intended to be it's going to not be the same it's going to be very skewed all over the place uh the bass tightness and the control and the dampen factor as a whole would be very poor so as a result you're basically my weston es5s what happens with is with those is that the bass becomes um weaker the treble becomes a lot more um, pronounced and the vocals become very like horn-like and it's sort of like they're yelling at you and when I plug it into my amplifier the sound is way way more balanced and way more laid back and effortless um also the reason why I got this amplifier was because of the uh, the better cost talk performance lower distortion and lower noise the the sound out of the Objective 2 amplifier is a lot more cleaner, as I said before, than the um, iPod Touch's output. So, if you guys have any uh, questions or comments, please leave it in the comment box. I will try to answer them to the best of my abilities. So, thanks for um, watching this video, guys. Later.